eternally blessed. What does it mean to be blessed? What does it mean to be eternally blessed? And we believe that we are blessed in many ways and that we have been saved by faith in Jesus Christ, that we live a life in which we seek to be sanctified and hopefully one day glorified. But how do we live with our sufferings and struggles, with our broken hearts and our broken lives, with our traumas and our tragedies? Even in the midst of this, we count ourselves blessed. And how can we see that we have been blessed by the Lord in the midst of all of these things? And so one of the sayings that had popped up in the readings is, what would be your lucky day? Everyone has a different idea of what luck means and what would be their lucky day. Some people believe that if they won the lottery, that would be their lucky day. Whereas other people believe if they met the right person and fell in love, that that was their lucky day or it would be their lucky day. Then others, it could be a great job. Some people would be, who would win the World Series? I don't know if I've got any baseball fans out there who's cheering for the the Dodgers or the Yankees, who are you cheering for? Yankees. The Yankees. Well, you're in trouble. <laughs> That's not going to be your lucky day. But it was amazing when he hit that grand slam the other day. Wow. That has, I don't think that ever happened before. That was pretty amazing. That was his lucky day. And then for others, with the election coming up, whoever one of their candidates wins, that might be their lucky day. And then it might be bad luck for the other people. We never know. But part of what we try to seek to understand, at least as Protestants, Christians, Presbyterians, is we don't necessarily believe in luck, we believe in grace. That by God's grace, we are blessed. That God can change our days and our lives in the blink of an eye, and that we seek to live into that. To know how we have been blessed, how we can live into grace. Especially in the midst of suffering. And we've been talking about the story of Job. Job is one of the oldest stories in the Bibles. And we've talked about that it started off as this horror, holy story where God is in the heavens and he's being worshipped. And the spirits and angels and even Satan himself comes before the Lord to report about what's been going on. And that Satan had asked that he might test Job. And so this is the beginning of humans asking that question, why do bad things happen to good people? And in some ways, in this story, I see that there's the struggle with codependency. How does one deal with the suffering of others as well? This breaks our heart. Sometimes it's extremely difficult to deal with, to watch people suffer, even to go through suffering. And so that's part of our journey is learning what choices we have to make that help us to struggle and not suffer as much as we might by our own choices. And the dark nights of the soul are those times when you cry out to God and God seems to be silent. And that we may ask many questions and that Job himself asked God, why, 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 Lord? And many people do. Why, if there's a good God, would he let suffering? Happen. If there's such a good God, why doesn't he do something about the evil in the world? And so, in the midst of asking these questions, Job's friends come to him and say, Well, you know, you must have done something. And they had all these different conversations trying to figure it out. Like many of us, we may struggle with understanding why bad things happen, or why we suffer, or why it happened to this person or that person. Or why did the hurricane happen that way? Why did it affect these people this way? And we know from the story of Job that that's not the right question. Those questions aren't the right one to ask of the Lord. That we should try to ask different questions. Like, what can I learn from this? Present suffering. What future good may come of this present suffering? That we never know. 